Russian composer who lived from 1882 to 1971. Uh, but he left Russia pretty much permanently in 1910, the year Debussy composed the piece I just played. And little did the world know, but he was going to revolutionize music pretty much between 1910 and 1913. Um, I was just watching a video on him, and it's amazing. The man didn't co compose anything of, of any worth or notability until he composed The Firebird, which is a masterpiece. That was like his first piece of music, and it's, it's unbelievable. And he was 27 years old, so far older than most students would be thinking about composing their first big work. I mean, Shostakovich was famous for composing the Great Symphony at age 18, but this man was definitely a late bloomer. And so in 1911, uh, 1910 was uh, Firebird, 1911 Petrushka, 1913, the famous Rite of Spring, which caused a, a what do you call it, riot in, in Paris. He was in Paris at this time. So all the, the whole, the center of the art world was in Paris in the beginning of the 20th century. Anyhow, so in 1918, several years after this, he had moved to Switzerland um, because his wife actually had, had TB and he had to be in cleaner air, lighter air. So they were living in Switzerland and he had a friend who was a, a, a poet and a moralist and they, did, they were sitting together one night and decided to write this, uh, this piece, L'Histoire du Soldat, it's a soldier's tale. It's actually an old Russian folk tale but it's based on the theme of Faust, which I think everybody knows. Faust sells his soul to the devil, and you know the, the, way, the, the way it goes. So what happens in this, this, this piece for the soldier tale actually was written for not this group. This is an arrangement for a smaller group. The original was clarinet, bassoon, violin, string bass, trumpet, trombone, and drum. It's a very odd combination of instruments, kind of like a little Dixieland band, actually. I think he, we, we think he picked up on that because there were Dixieland bands uh, traveling through Europe at that time. Anyhow, and so he and his friend got together and decided to, to write this sort of story, and it was going to be a traveling play of sorts. And um, it had four actors, a narrator and three actors, and one of them was supposed to be a dancer as well. So think about it. It's music, spoken dialogue. So is it a play with music or music? Is it theater with or is it... Is, not, is it opera, or is it dance theater with spoken dialogue? It's, it's sort of a hybrid. It, it doesn't really fit into any category. But Stravinsky being Stravinsky wrote far more brilliant music than the actual story merits in some ways. Everything is sort of hidden in his music. So I would like to be so bold. I'm going to try to give you a quick summary of the, the soldier's tale. The soldier meets, he's on a, a furlough. Okay, he's alone, walking towards his town. He meets the devil, and the devil says, you have a nice violin there. Would you give me some lessons? And the guy says, you know, I don't know about that. He says, well, I'll feed you really well. Just come to my house for a few days, and we'll give you some lessons. So he goes to the devil's house and gets well fed, teaches him the violin, comes back three days later, goes to look for his girlfriend, and realizes that three years have passed, not three days. So already the devil's got him. Um, then the, he's kind of upset about this, so the devil says, well, don't feel so bad. You can use this book that you trade the, the violin for. You can use this book to tell the future. You can get rich off of it. So he ends up getting rich and, you know, still not very happy. The soldier's disillusioned with his wealth. wealth excuse me. Um, he wants to buy his violin back. He can get no sound out of it. Um, let's see. To, he actually loses most of his wealth. He comes, oh, he, he, he finds out that the uh, king's daughter is, is ill, and the king has promised her hand in marriage to whoever succeeds in curing her. So there's a movement, the most famous part of this piece, where the soldier plays music for the princess and sort of brings her around. And so what happens is, is the soldier then plays the devil in cards and loses. Somebody tells him, if you lose to the devil, it'll drive him crazy because um, he always wants to win. So he purposely loses everything, and the devil just goes nuts and falls on the floor in, in, a, in a frenzy. And the soldier picks up his violin and plays the devil's dance, the last dance that we play. And uh, the devil says, 
fine, you think you won, but don't cross outside of the king's territory. Well, a few years later, his bride, the, the princess, says, oh, I want to see your old hometown. He says, well, we're not supposed to go out of there. She says, well, nobody's going to know. The devil's not really watching. Of course, as soon as they cross the line, the devil's waiting, and you know, he takes the guy away, and then that's it. So not a very happy ending, but an interesting story. So I'd li we'd like to play. I've been so bold uh, as to take samples of the music. So we're going to play several musical samples, and I'll just describe what I think is going on. This is not necessarily some kind of historically correct interpretation, but it's what I see in the music, and I think others would probably do it. Okay, the first one is the opening theme. Mine comes through to the factory. <laughs> okay, there's five movements in this piece, all uh, just so you know. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't put that in the program. The first movement is called The March of the Soldier. And just imagine, this not just the march. This is a man who's kind of skipping and happy. He's on furlough now. He's going to go see his girlfriend. And so the music really indicates this. We almost begin in the middle of a step. <laughs> Ends up be being presented in the next movie. So we're just going to give you a sample of that. This is sort of the Stravinsky's 